DJ Akim, DJ Posca, live from Lagos Bomb, the Big Apple, voila! My name is Tragedy Gaddafi, the Queensbridge icon. Nah, let me stop. Tragedy Gaddafi, 252, man. Fab Mark. Oral report is basically the oral report. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had still reporting. You had, of course, the classic album, including me, myself, Capone Noriega. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 25 of Life, which was the war report, then you had still reporting, and now you have the oral report. Actually, my, my, my brother came up with that title, my brother Christ Castro came up with that title, the oral report. But uh, it's basically reporting on my aura. And you know, a lot of people ask me, what does aura mean? As most people may know, I take words and I kind of give them my own meaning. So, aura is like my energy. Or the energy I come from, like many other people, you know, from my side of life, so to speak, or many other people who go through struggles, who go through trials and tribulations. That's our aura to go through trials and tribulations and to go through life issues and come out on top because to whom it was. So I'm just reporting on that aura. I'm reporting on my energy, reporting on my energy that relates to other people in the hip hop community and in the world. Uh, well, you got a mixture of some classics in there because, you know, most of the time when I do shows, and that's a good question, a lot of people go, oh, well, why did you put T-O-N-Y on there? Or why did you put uh, the joint you did with Nori off the uh, off the mixtape or whatever, the Even If joint, and uh, a couple of other classic joints in there, like Turn Around, um, Funk Mode, which was a classic I made with Lars Professor, which is the first song Habit from Mob Deep ever rhymed on. Um, the reason why me and DJ Akil decided to put those songs on the album, again, it's an album slash mixtape because it has, you know, classics on there, so that's the mixtape side of it, and then it has a lot of exclusive songs. It's 30 tracks, and more than half of them are exclusive songs. Uh, again, when I go do shows, a lot of people, they love the new stuff, but they always want to hear what they remember me for the most, especially my niche fans, like my core supporters. They love those classics, you know? Like I said, they love the new songs, but they really love the classics that, you know, made history. So I like to keep keep giving them that as well as, you know, not so much a reminder, but what they really relate to and what they pull to. So we just combinated in that, you know? That was, that was actually DJ Kill's idea. To do, I didn't. I didn't want to do it because every time I go to a show, they're like, "Yo, dude, people want me to do Black and Proud," and I'm like, "Nah, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna do Make Motion, a new joint." They're like, "Yeah, we want to hear that, but yo, we want to hear Grand Groove too." So it was DJ Akil's idea to throw those classic joints in there, and at first I was like, "Uh," but then when I thought about it, I was like, "Nah, that's smart. That was a good idea." Uh, I, I like to keep, I mean, there was a time when I first came out, I was just an MC. Yeah, I just, you know, my, my knowledge on life was limited. I was young, you know, and I just rapped about all I knew at that time. And again, you know, when you grow, when you develop in life, you get new experiences. So I always came from the streets and now I'm traveling, seeing the world, becoming more open to things in the world and going to Germany. You know, like for instance, the first time I went to Germany was when they tore down the Berlin Wall that separated East and West Germany. Now, where I come from in Queensbridge, at that time, before I went to Germany, I thought the only poor people were black and Spanish people because I didn't see the world. Then when I got out and seen the world, I was like, you know, I ain't gonna lie, man. Like, I had 10 little white kids little babies in the dead of winter. You know, Berlin's cold. Some of them didn't have coats on. Some of them didn't have shoes and socks on. They just tore down that wall. 
So they were coming over the wall and they were like dirty and begging for food. And I never saw anybody as poor as that in Queensbridge. So my experiences taught me different things and it opened my level of consciousness. And I ain't gonna lie, I cried that day. Like I fed all of them. I took them to McDonald's and shit. Wasn't the best food, but I wanted to give them something because I know what it's like to be hungry. And I still know what it's like to be hungry because I'm still hungry. And those experiences I incorporate in my music. Again, it's street, but there's a consciousness there. When I made Intelligent Hoodlum, I was just becoming, just opening, being, being opened up to a new world. So I was kind of extreme with it. I made Arrest the President. And when I made Arrest the President, it was, it was, it was an innocence there because I, I was coming into, you know, more, becoming more social, political, becoming more politically conscious. And I was, you know, I, I believed that the president was, you know, the head of the nation, you know, and I made arrest of president because all the years that I grew up in hardships and struggle and, you know, seeing that the president was the head of the nation, if the nation is having these problems, then the president is responsible. And if a kid gets locked up in Queensbridge on the corner for selling crack, then the president should be responsible for it too because he's the head of the nation. How did this stuff get here? This was my thinking at the time. And in all honesty, that's how it should be. But that's not a reality. So when I made the rest of the presidents, it was an innocence, it was purity, but it was naivety. And in a, less of a, in a lesser term, it was ignorance because now through my life experiences, I realized that it was never about the president. It was always about the presidency, the institution of government. It's not about the president, it's about, about the institution of government. You're never gonna arrest the president, you know what I mean? Because you would have to arrest the whole, that whole institution of government. And, and you know, reality, when you come into knowledge, you realize that that's never gonna happen. It depends on the project. With this specific project, the oral report, I let the beat kind of dictate my mind state. Like I would go in, listen to the beat, and whatever the beat said to me, I just said back to it. So I more or less like went in with the beats. I didn't, it wasn't a conceptual album in the sense where I said, okay, I'm gonna make these type of songs, this type of song. Now, it was no formula. I kind of went in and just did what I felt. It was more natural. It was a, you know, I wanted to make an album with just narcotic lines, dope lines. You know, I didn't want to concentrate on being, on being conscious or waking everybody up. It wasn't that type of project, you know, and, I, and I'm cool with that. You know, it was like, I just wanted to, I just wanted to stun on this lyrically, you know, and just show my, my, my strength lyrically, you know. After doing it for like 30 something years, I wanted to show that my pen was not, my sword wasn't dull. Or my pen, you know, my pen still flow. And you know, I got a lot of new and upcoming artists on there like Fab Monday, you know, FT who's a veteran but kind of came back, uh, Starving B, of course, Royal Flush, you know, among many, and um, you know, they, these dudes are spitters, man. Like, you know, they, they, they're awesome, you know what I mean? So I wanted to show that I could, you know, I could swing amongst the best of them still, you know what I mean? And still lay my flag down, you know what I mean? Fab Monday. I did it with DJ Akil. We did it together. It's been a process. I gotta thank DJ Akil. He's very patient. Um, he's a good dude, man, and he knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? I, I reckon, honestly, what made me want to do it was that he did a project. I saw another project. <laughs> It was Foul Monday's project, and when I saw how he put it together, I was like, yo, this shit is fire. And like, I'm seeing this dude every day, and he's like, yo, tragedy, you know, we kick it. He's like, yo, I want you to do a job for me, but he never told me he could do that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, yo, he did this shit? When I listened to Foul Monday's joint, I was like, yo, a kill did this? He's like, yeah. And I hit him right away. I was like, yo. 
Matter of fact, while I was talking to Monday, I was hitting the kill. Like, yo, listen, I need you to work on my mixtape. Cause he did his shit so dope. And I like the work, you know, of course, Foul Monday did his job on it. And that's why he's on the report too. You know what I'm saying? But he, Akil gave it a certain kind of feel. And I was like, he's the type of dude, like he got that eye where he could, I like to make projects that's like a movie. And I was like, he can do it with the scratches and with bridging the songs together. And he knows how to make the transition. Everybody could be, he, Akil was not just a DJ. He's a production, you know what I'm saying? Cause anybody could de play a record. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know how to make the transition from one record to the next record and make the whole project make sense. And that's why I wanted to get him on this and he definitely did that. There's a, there's a few, but I think the main one, man, is like, it's actually in the works right now and that's with my cousin, Ghostface. So it's gonna be an album, a, 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 a collective album project that we're working on with Myself, Ghostface, and Killer Priest. And like, you know, I love Killer Priest. It's my brother, Ghost family. And uh, we're gonna put that together, man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm waiting for them to actually come back off their European tour. And we're gonna start going in and getting that, getting that in. You know, I recently spoke to them and it's a go. So it's definitely gonna happen. So that's like one of my main, like, and it's funny because I did a song with RZA on my Guess the Lost album, me, RZA, Cameron. And uh, I think it was pun, but Fat Joe took pun off it. But uh, and I did a song with um, Ray Kwan on my. Uh, I think it was was it still recording? No, it was, I think it was Thug Matrix. Yeah, I did a song with Ray Kwan on Thug Matrix called Gorilla Rap, produced by Scram Jones. I actually hooked Scram Jones up with Ray Kwan, and um, I, I introduced him. But yeah, I did songs with Ray, and I did songs with RZA, but I never did a song with Ghost. And I love the whole Wu-Tang Clan, um, but Ghost was always my favorite. And it's funny, I found out later, like in the late 90s, that we were actually cousins. So it's bugged out because when I first went to go record Gorilla Rap with Ray Kwan, I'm talking and Ray is like, yo, you remind me of my man. So I'm like, who? He like Ghost. And come to find out, years later, come to find out Ghost was my cousin. So it was like, that was kind of weird how I reminded Ray Kwan of Ghost and Ghost was my cousin. So that was that's the that was that's the member that's the artist that I want to do a song with that's from the '90s era. That's like the most I want to do do, do songs with him the most. So that's it's a blessing that 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 type of project is coming together. Um, I think, and it's funny because that's that's a good question, like how people have allowed commercial radio to define hip hop. And that's kind of asinine, it's backwards. Before the streets or the culture defined what hip hop was. Now they're letting, you know, when, Ray, when DJs went out in the world, you know, and they passed through certain areas and came into contact, they, you know, they was like, oh, oh, that's, that's some new shit, that's dope. I gotta play that, I need that record. You know, it wasn't, the DJ dictating what hip hop was necessarily, but it was the DJ breaking the hip hop, breaking new innovative sounds. You know, now it's kind of different whereas, you know, the DJs, you know, this, I hate to say it, the DJs become like an Android, you know, where the program director programs the, with the DJ plays, opposed to the DJ actually breaking a record and taking a chance on a record. I'm gonna tell you a story. I remember one time, um, and this is how I got the war report on radio. When I first brought the CNN project to uh, Funkmaster Flex, and this goes along with what you asked, how people don't understand authentic New York hip hop sound. You know, um, when I first bought the record, the war report to Funkmaster Flex, he didn't want to play it. He was like, yo, yo, you my man, but I don't really like it. And the first thing I said to him, because I had to think quick, you know, I couldn't let him just shoot it down because this was my only thing. This, I put so much into it, this had to work for me. I had no choice but to make it work, you understand? And I had Capone and Capone's mom and Nori and Nori's family, myself, my family, our friends and their, you know, depended on me to make it happen. I talked so much shit on how I was gonna make it happen, I had to make it happen. 
So when I brought it to Flex and he was like, yo, I don't really, yo, you my man. So he's kind of saying like, I'll do you a favor, maybe play it once, but I don't really like it. And I said, yo, man, you can't really, you can't really say that. I said, you didn't like the 36 Chamber record. You said it wouldn't go nowhere. And he froze. He froze. Cause I was there when he got the record. I happened to be with him when he got the 36 Chamber record and he said it wouldn't go anywhere. Wu-Tang is a landmark in hip hop right now. So when I hit him with that, he was like, he just looked at me and he just go for T.O.N.Y. T.O.N.Y. and the Bay and Y. So my point is that he still was open. I had to hit him, but he still was open to break a record like a real DJ. The reason why people associate with associate, you know, certain sounds with just being in the past is because, you know, a, a lot of these artists on this side, New York, you know, they don't sound authentic. They sound like you can't tell where they're from. Before, you know, you can tell when somebody's from Brooklyn just by talking. You can tell somebody's from Harlem just by talking. The same way you can tell DJ Kill is from France. You know what I'm saying? Now it's, it's a little different now. You know, everybody's sort of like aura snatched that aura from, you know what I'm saying, the South and the West, and they've incorporated it into their lifestyle and culture. And now, you know, there's no authenticity. You know, I can't say there's no authenticity because I'm still here, but it's, it's very far and few in between. You know, I think Uncle Murder's hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Uncle Murder's hip hop. I'm hip hop. You know, Flush is hip hop. Um, Dave East is hip hop. Uh, you got a lot of artists that's out there that's, to me, that's hip hop. Um, uh, uh, Joel Ortiz is hip hop. Uh, 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 the whole Pro Era crew is hip hop. You know what I mean? You got a lot of hip hop. Of course, you got Large Professor. You got you got Nas. You got Mega. You got you know CNN. That's still hip hop to me. You know what I mean? Wall Deep still hip hop. Nature's still hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I even I even look at uh I think Lloyd Banks is still hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Fab is hip hop to me. You know what I mean? You know there was a time I think what made the '90s so interesting is that there was an array of music. It was it was, it was various different styles. You know, you had Bad Boy, you had No Limit, you had Wu-Tang, you had 2-5 CNN, you had The Mob, you had Nas, you had Jay-Z. You had different variations, you had a buffet. You know what I'm saying? Now it's so consolidated and formulated into one lane that there's no variety, man. It's like eating Chinese food every day. You get, I get sick of it, I can't eat Chinese food every day. That's, that's, of course, that's a major factor. Now the sound is so digital, it's become, uh, to me, I call it zombified. It's like zombie music, you know, it's like trance music. It's too, it's, it's, it lacks soul. That's why, yo, another artist that's hip hop to the core to me, and you know, my girl had to put me on to him really, for me to really listen to him, J. Cole. You know what I'm saying? J. Cole is hip hop all the way. In fact, I think J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar is hip hop too. Kendrick Lamar is extreme hip hop. Like he's, he's the truth. You know what I'm saying? He encompasses hip hop. Um, J. Cole is hip hop, man. J. Cole is hip hop all the way, man. It's amazing. I think he's amazing, yo. The way he incorporates it, you know, to where it's not dated but it's not him reaching up. You can tell like a lot of these dudes, man, they're trying to be, you know, now, instead of just being now. I think J. Cole is now with the remnants of what truth was and is now, you know what I mean? You know, I made records like Grand Groove. You know what I'm saying? Grand Groove was like one of my first big chart and records on the Billboard charts, commercially, but it was hip hop. It was a song about my grandma. I mean, it was all about my grandmother. 
but it was over R&B track. It was hip hop. Big, when Big made Juicy, that was hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yo, this track that you can die for you, live from Lagos Pump, man. Check this out, I'm doing it right now with DJ Post Scott and DJ Akil. It's all real, man. 252, QB forever. All important.